Hello everyone. Well, today I'm going to be unboxing this Bissell Featherweight Pro 2-in-1 High Power Lightweight Vacuum. This particular vacuum was very kindly supplied to me by Mark Leslie, who chose it for my Amazon wish list. So, a big thank you once again to Mark for this Bissell. And it's thanks to Mark that I'm unboxing it now, and also thanks to Mark that I'll be doing a demonstration of it in a few weeks. Now this is designed for hard floors only. It doesn't say you can use it, it says it's not suitable for carpets, but uh, I expect you could use it on the odd entrance mat. I'll be testing that anyway, I've got a large entrance mat in my kitchen and I think it'll be okay on that, but it is really just a hard floor cleaner. Here is the energy label on the box. It gets an A for energy use. I think it's only 100 watts, this particular vacuum. It gets a G, though, for dust emissions. So if you're allergic to dust or dust mite allergens, possibly this is not one to go for. It's quite loud at 82.9 decibels. It says it's unsuitable for carpets, hence the symbol there next to the carpet um, symbol. And it gets a C for hard floor cleaning. So this might be something to go for if you need something very lightweight but want a mains powered vacuum. You don't want a rechargeable. And if you've got mainly hard floors to clean, this could be ideal. But of course it will convert to a handheld vacuum as well. I did unbox quite a while ago on my channel the older version of this. So basically this is the updated version. So first out of the very slender box comes a handle. It's a nice metal tube. As I say it's very very light. Um, that green part I think that's what goes into the actual machine. And then you've got the handle here. And at the top there's the cord storage, you've got the little hook that turns down and also under the storage hook there is a little... I'm all upside down on my monitor, excuse me, let me turn it the right, that's it, I can see what I'm doing now. We've got a little hook which you can put the cable through so it keeps it up out of the way when you're vacuuming. Get a crevice tool. So that's for all your nooks and crannies. Now I'm assuming, I'll, I'll test this, I'm assuming you can actually attach this when you're using it as a handheld, but I can't see any reason why when you're using it as a stick vac you could slip the crevice tool on just to go around the edges of say your kitchen if you're giving your kitchen floor a clean. Here's the main nozzle. So it says Featherweight Pro, nice lime green wheels. It's, um, this is a budget priced vacuum, but it would be nice to have seen slightly better wheels. I, do, I did read a review or two that said that the wheels had dropped off and they managed to stick them. So it would be nice to see a textured wheel, uh, like a tyre so it makes it easier to push on floors because I think on some shiny floors it could be a bit slippy slidey if you know what I mean but also a protective wheel or tyre would um, stop the floor from being marked but anyway that's a little thing it's uh, not obviously not going to be swivelling this cleaner it just has a joint that moves up and down for some reason there is a litter picker here at the front for pet hair Looking at this nozzle, I can't see any reason why it can't be used on short pile carpets. Don't expect it to do very well on pet hair on carpets. Should be fine on hard floors though. You've got two little wheels at the front as well and a little squeegee strip at the back and in the middle is your main suction nozzle. Suction opening, should I say. Here's the user guide. Um, just gives you details of how to put it together, how to empty it and replacement parts that are available. I'm sure you can get those direct from Bissell. 
just thought there might be a energy label inside but I can't see one so it's just the energy label we saw printed on the box. I like the colouring of the lime green and white. Right here's the machine itself. Now for a handheld it is quite large, certainly not the lightest handheld cleaner. It's quite long. So it's certainly heavier than a dust buster type machine, but it seems pretty, pretty well made. We've got a nice thick cable on this. They could have cheapened it by putting a thinner cable. After all, it only uses 100 watts of electricity, but it seems to have a reasonable, a reasonable quality cable on this. Yeah, that's not too bad. And of course, being a UK model, just take those off. We've got the fitted plug and also another little feature I like that you find on most Bissells. You've got the cord grip actually built into the plug so when you wrap the cord around the cord storage hooks you can fasten it, the plug end, to the cord so it doesn't unravel when you're storing or carrying the machine. So here it is. So this is in handheld mode like this. You can use it for your upholstery. You could use it in the car, but because of its length, it might not get into all the nooks and crannies. It'll be okay for the seats, it'll be okay for the main areas of the footwell. And of course, when you connect the crevice tool, I'll put it around that way actually, you will be able to get into some of the nooks and crannies, but I think you'd probably struggle getting into certain areas of a car with this. It's slightly different. They've improved it to earlier versions. It seems to have uh, some sort of cyclonic action. There is uh, a little cone here that uh, I think the dirt will spin around that. So it's just very basic cyclone. Here's the model 1703. You can have a look at the plate on the back. So it's uh, Bissell. Uh, double insulated, it basically says, oh, hang on a minute. It says it's 420 to 520 watts. So where did I read? I read somewhere, maybe it was on Amazon, I read somewhere that it was only 100 watts. Ah, oh, unless it means 100, yeah, it says it on the box. Unless it means 100 air watts, possibly. I don't know. Can we see? So reflection. It says 100 watt suction power. I'm quite surprised that if this, if this is 420, it says 420. What can't speak, can't lie, does say 420 to 520 watts. Which might explain the noise level. I thought for a 100 watt cleaner it seemed a bit noisy, but uh, anyway, should have a good suction to it. You've got your little on-off switch here, little rocker switch. And here is another little switch to release the dust container. You can just, I don't know if you can just about see, that's where the motor and the fan will be located. It does seem quite, quite sturdy, quite well put together. And here's the dust cup. You've got a maximum fill line there filter in the top. This will be the only filter in this machine. As I said earlier it gets a G rating so it's a low rating for dust emissions. That you'll be able to rinse that under the tap if you need to give it a thorough clean. Obviously make sure it's dry before reassembly. And here is the little cyclone type assembly I'm assuming. And should be Oh, hang on. Open. There we go. That's it. Here we have a filter. That's all, all the filtration is in this machine. It's a, a two-layered filter. You've got a black layer and you've got the felt layer. I'll just check the instructions just to see if that filter is washable. One would hope so. Um, you can buy spare filters. In fact, they sell the whole filter assembly as a spare part. 
this whole unit with the filter seems to be what they're offering as a spare. Cleaning the filter, the filter can be removed. The filter, ah, filter can be dried, so you can actually wash it gently in hand, hand wash it in warm water. And of course, make sure it's dry before putting it back. So there we go. It says top there, which makes us realize that uh, it goes in the top way up. So it's the white layer up, the black layer to that side. Now put it back in the assembly. Da -da -da. Which way was it? This way. There's a little lug here that sticks out and a little slit here. So that needs to go inside that, obviously. I've been no good on Blue Peter, folks, doing things back to front. I don't know how they did it. Right, there we go. And then you just click it in place. So that is available. All that's available as a spare part, according to the instructions. So to empty it, obviously, you'd remove this, tip out the dirt, Obviously take the filter out, tip out the dirt, and then just pop the filter back in. Which way does it go? That way it goes. It won't let you put it in that way. There's only one way it will let you go put it in and push it down. That's it, there's a little seal all, all the way around. And then locate it at the bottom. There's another little lug that sticks out and another slot. So locate it and then push it down until it clicks, I'm assuming. Yes, there we go. So that's it, not a lot to show you. Let's pop the floor nozzle into the end. This does seem a weak point, I have to say, just holding it now. The machine itself does feel quite good and solid and the handle seems okay. This is possibly under heavy use is a part that could fail. Obviously you'll be able to buy that as a spare, but it's a, it's a low price budget cleaner. Obviously this will cost considerably less than many of the rechargeable types, but it might suit your needs if you just want something for your hard floors. You've got a little cover there, I've just noticed, so you need to move that cover down in order to insert the handle. So that pushes in, Ah, oh, that's it. So it pushes in and then it should click. Let's try and show you there. There you go. It should click into place. There we are. Again, that is a part that I'm thinking with a lot of use. This bit here, I mean, it seems fairly solid with, but you know, that could be prone to cracking or breaking if it's not looked after. It depends how often you remove the handle. You might just need this machine just to do your floors and you might just leave the handle in place. So it is possible to use it like this with the handle attached if you just need to quickly whip over your sofa with it. Of course you can use it like this. When you're doing your upholstery you don't have to have a nozzle on. You can just use the cleaner end like that and, and whiz over your upholstery. So let's pop that back in. Whoops. Whoops. <laughs> yes, it's hmm, the wheels do look a little bit a little bit flimsy. I have to say it's not going to suffer any harm in my hands. I can assure you. But anyway, let's uh, plug it in. I think it's quite a fairly short mains cable. I'll put all the details underneath the video, all the specifications the mains lead length etc. I might just be able to quickly tell you now if it says, I have read it somewhere but I'm not sure if it was on the box or on the website Amazon. Uh, da -da. Oh it says 15 foot, 15 foot power cord. I don't know what that is in Imperial. That is Imperial, I mean metric. Um, I don't know, I don't think it'd be very long maybe about five meters. Let's see if I've got a spare socket here. Yes, I have. Right. Let's switch it on. It's 
not, not that noisy really. Let's judge the suction power. Yeah, it's got a good, it's got a good suck. I'll give it that. What I'm going to do, might as well do a very quick demo. We'll have to pop some dirt. I'll get some dirt and pop it on some hard floor on the, onto a bit of laminate floor. Um, so I'll get my rolled oats out, my flour and my couscous etc. Sprinkle it on and we'll just give it a very brief demo just to see how well it is at picking up dirt from a hard floor. Well I've gone a bit mad actually, no surprises there. I've put down a little bit more than I was expecting to. Now I put down a bit too much flour. Flour is the substance that is likely to clog that little filter pretty quickly reducing the suction. So anyway, I've put down some flour. There's some rice there and also rolled oats. So let's give this Bissell Featherweight Pro a quick go. Just point out, you can't see it at the moment, it is just stood at the end. It does actually stand up on its own. You don't have to lean it up against the wall, it will stay upright, which is good if you just want to stand it in the corner of your room, okay? Let's give it a go. Let me just get the flex and I'll clip that up out of the way at the top of the handle. Let's pop it in. There we go. Okay, let's uh, see how well it does. Oh dear. Oh dear, now that. <laughs> that is quite. Quite the snowplow that this machine. Not a lot has gone in to to the actual unit. Now, what would work actually? Let me just show you how it's snowplowed. You can see here, it's basically pushed most of that to the front and hasn't actually picked up very much at all. I can hear it rattling about. Um, can we see? It's not really picked up very much at all. I'm sure if I was to just tilt the cleaner back a bit, if it'll allow me to, I can clean that up. Let's give it a go. Obviously it's a little bit of an extreme example this. I'm not sure if I will be able to tilt it back. I might just have to lift it over. mostly everything up but uh, you probably noticed a change in the motor which probably means that it's got a little bit clogged up. I'm just going to take the handle off and we'll see it in action without the nozzle. I think really obviously you're not going to spill this much dirt on your kitchen floor for whipping around your kitchen floor before you mop it. Um, it might be okay but I did detect change in tone of the motor. I mean it's not it's not anywhere near capacity yet. There's still plenty of capacity left. If I take the filter out oh it's a good job this is all washable. Oh dear. Yes, it has, it has quite quickly. This is clogged with the flour, as you can see. That's what's cut the suction off pretty quickly. I thought it might. I did uh, let the bag of flour slip rather. So um, I was expecting that. I've cleaned most of that up now. So, you know, it's a bit of an extreme example, this, what I've just done. But obviously it can't really cope with a lot of debris in one go by the looks of it. Well, certainly not flour. Had I not put the flour down, we might have had a different result. 
Anyway, I'll pop that back and just give it a go cleaning up the rest using it as a handheld. Again, you can hear the tone of the motor has gone a bit higher, and again, that is due purely, I think, the flour has done that. It's clogged the filter again. If I was just picking up the oats and rice, I don't think I would have had any problem with the filter clogging. So this might be okay for some, some items on the floor, but not for large quantities of flour. Not many small cleaners can cope with large quantities of flour, and even some bagless cleaners, large cleaners can't. But, you know, it's got, obviously I've not cleaned the whole area, I've cleaned most of the area, but it has got all the larger particles. Well, it seems a shame I've messed up this lovely new vacuum, but a quick rinse under the tap and it'll be as good as new again. Well, that's just about the end of my unboxing and brief demo of the Bissell Featherweight Pro 2-in-1 High Power Lightweight Vacuum Cleaner. Well, I can certainly confirm it is very lightweight and it does have a good suction on it, but it doesn't cope with cleaning up larger quantities of fine particles because they tend to clog the filter very quickly. But if you need something relatively inexpensive just to do your hard floors and possibly your lightweight rugs, this Bissell could be just the machine you're looking for. Stay tuned because I'll be doing a full demonstration later on on my channel. So until the next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.